Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. What is legal entity? Right. Uh, it's a very important from the finance standpoint and from the legal standpoint and for the tax standpoint. Everything lies based on the legal entity. So. It's, it's a basically in a very uh, simple uh, uh, sentence, I, I can just say that this basically represents how any organization is organized or structured, right? So for an example, uh, let's say here I am given that let's say company can, uh, you know, divide their entire organization structure into two legal entities. Let's say one is for American and one is for Apex branches, right? Now, what is basically in this legal entity, what is going to attach? So if you see, that is why I said this is the master because each legal entity record here, you're all billing, which means the, your invoices will attach, your tax, your revrec, journal laser, treatment, or basically the entire finance uh, stuffs are basically tight with, tightly coupled with the legal entity. So for an example, if my legal entity, anything which I'm doing uh, a billing or as for the legal entity America, then of course, based on that, my tax uh, calculations and, and the rest of the other general lasers and the revenue recognition, everything go and tightly attached with this, right? So every organization, at least they have one legal entity. Without that, uh, the multinational or normal even uh, uh, companies, private limited companies cannot operate. They must have at least one. And how in the project it typically follows? It typically follows based on the countries or uh, region, right? Uh, system of uh, uh, companies basically tell tells us that, okay, these are the legal entities that basically we, this is how we structured it. In each legal entity, they will say that, okay, five countries are covered in this legal entity. The remaining six countries is covered in this legal entity. That sort of things they can say, right? But bare minimum one legal entity must be there. Now, once we have a legal entity, a couple of things, right? So legal entities rules can cannot be updated or activated. So again, the question is where I will ca capture the legal entity, right? So typically, uh, as I said, even uh, the yesterday class when we were talking about charge type and billing type, billing frequency, all are inherited from the product. But at the order or the order product label, you can go and change that. You can override it. You can also write some automation rules based on that if you want to change that. Similarly, for the legal entities also, it will coming by default uh, 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 from the product. If not. Uh, then you can go and again write something, let's say based on uh, most of the, in the project, how we are doing. Let's suppose uh, my client says that based on, let's say, billing country, right? Define the or populate the legal entity over here in the on the order line, right? So what we are doing in the project, right? As I said, uh, let's say this mapping, if my client has given that, okay, for five, different countries the legal entity is us or america and for remaining six countries uh, let's say legal entity is apex so i will store this mapping somewhere in salesforce maybe you can use custom metadata or custom setting or custom object again it's all depend upon how you are going to architect but you have to store that mapping somewhere and when the order get placed, right? So based on that billing country i will go and look after this mapping uh, table and based on that you can populate the legal entity. This is one of the requirements you will get in most of the product. Or else some companies say, no, I will capture the legal entity right at the account level, the in-customer account level, and make sure that will basically come and stamp it on all order line or order product level. So that is also you have to do the automation for that. By default, it is not coming from the account and is stamping it on the order product. Uh, you have to write that logic, uh, either you can use trigger or flows. In it, one of the automation tool, you can use it to stamp the legal entity. Now, of course, while stamping it, it must be, I mean, uh, it's not just that you are, oh, you are looking for this mapping table and assign it. 
Now let's say I sold a laptop, right? I sold a laptop and uh, in that legal entity is, let's say, Apex. Okay, uh, at the product level. And, uh, 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 and of course, legal entity is not directly attached to the product, right? So I'm just for the making these things easily understand, I'm directly saying it, but in that actually billing rule comes, billing treatment, and then the legal entity. But let's for time being assume this laptop is attached to this and I have placed the order. You have the order product under it, the product is laptop. And of course the billing rule and billing treatment, everything will come and stamp it over here. But your engine or your mapping engine is trying to update this as an America over this, right? Then it will create a problem in the world. Why? Because for American legal entity, there is no billing treatment or the rule for this laptop. Getting my uh, point? Then, th then the system will not understand that how they will treat this product and should generate the invoice or not. If you remember, the billing rule, the very first value is that do you want to generate invoice or not, right? It's in drop down, yes and no. So based on legal entity, it must be, of course, that your legal entity must be uh, you know attach or related to that product also when you are defining or defaulting the legal entity if you define something which is not related to that order product then of course uh, uh, it, the, you will see that okay system did not generate the invoice line for that particular order product okay and remember here uh, here whatever we are discussing uh, at the product level so every journey starts anything from our product only so it will all cascade down to order line line level and that will followed by the invoice line level okay so what it is saying that once your order is uh, i mean then the question is still what point i can go and activate the or update the legal entity on the order line you can do it before order activation. Once your order is activated, right, you cannot able to go and update the legal entity. Okay, followed by, of course, once you uh, once you activated, after that you will go and generate the invoice, and then, of course, at that point of time also, you can't update the legal entity at that point of time. Now, uh, from the structure standpoint or from the system standpoint, sometimes question is asked that, okay, if I will not populate uh, a legal entity, what will happen? Because this is not a mandatory field anywhere. Well, system will not give you any error. System will not even stop any transactions. All things are happening, but you will see that things are not correctly populated. Not Sometimes it's works, sometimes something is not working. So that is why it's a highly recommendation that use always legal entities to bind all the transactions under that. Okay. And of course, the invoice line will inherit the legal entity from order product, right? Um, now at the, at the, sometimes the legal entity, you know, what happened is once the invoice is generated and not posted, which means uh, it's, it's not given to the client. Sometimes even that billing team will get a request, uh, you know, from the finance team that, hey, this in the legal entity which is there is not correct. So just make sure that legal entity before sending it to the client, please make sure that legal entity needs to be updated. So what billing is allowing you that you can still go and change it manually, of course, because system will not do anything. So at the line level, you can go and change the legal entity for that invoice line but again once the invoice is posted your invoice is locked which means posted means now you are basically send it uh, that that invoice to the customer since you have already sent it you can't change that invoice we will discuss later how you will cancel the invoice and all but that invoice is locked once your invoice is posted that your invoice is locked okay so let's go in the system and uh, we'll try to, you know, create it uh, a legal entity first. Uh, so let's go and see where from where we will create. So we'll go back to our uh, uh, org, right? Just a second. Hey, Ashish, uh, just can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. 
so basically i uh, just to summarize what you said is that although the product needs a legal entity but uh, ev almost every time uh, on an order product the legal entity is kind of updated right based on which based on some rules based on uh, whichever country or whichever legal entity the order is getting placed for irrespective of the yeah, legal that entity you have to write uh, that logic you have to write yes so if you see oh. legal entity is not directly related to or attached to the product right uh, product are talking or basically attached to billing rule and then under billing rule you have a billing treatment billing treatment is attached to your legal entity okay correct so at, at the order product level you have to develop that logic that logic you can write it in the trigger as i said order product trigger or you can create a flow if you uh, both the ways there but of course uh, as for the salesforce platform we should try avoiding coding if possible through flow let's go and develop create a flow and based on that we can populate that okay and 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 once you populate at what point of time as i said you can change or you cannot change once your order is activated you can't change it at order level but once after that you will generate the invoice at the invoice level also you can change if it is let's say some mistakes happen it is not correct legal entity sometimes companies realign their structure right uh, we might have you guys have heard some, sometimes news that this company is again restructuring their internal or external uh, business lines right then in that case also they keep changing or you know their legal entity structure then of course at that time also if your invoice is not posted yet you can always come and system will allow you to change but once invoice is posted uh, then you can't change anything on the invoice. okay awesome so basically uh, then in that case whatever we are updating on order order line that will overwrite the entity that is present on the billing treatment am i correct for that order yes 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 for that order. okay, okay. If, awesome. but but the point is that is what i explained you can override it system will not stop you but again the invoice will not generate invoice will not generate right do why because the the billing treatment that you said it is at uh, tied to let's say us legal entity and that billing rule is attached to that product but on your order product the product lookup is there let's say the laptop you sold that laptop is there but the legal entity that you have populated make sure that for that legal entity there is a relationship with the product that is what you have to take there getting my point yeah so is the is the entity not so what i am trying to say is uh, here you have so one product here have a billing rule you can have a hundred of different treatments right and each treatment can have different different legal entity okay understood okay getting my point so let's say yeah. here you have us apec uh, north america like that is there and you have three treatments then in that case uh, uh, you know you can go and populate apex also then also invoicing will happen because there is a link i mean there is a relationship but let's Understood. say here only you have us right you do not have yeah. anything related to apex then what system will do system will not understand that right and that is how this object is. okay and that's the reason no, no. the legal entity is not there at the rule level because in that case i mean one product can have only one rule so in that case somebody says hey i have 10 different legal entities what i will do in that case should i go and create 10 different products the answer is no that is how that is why it is designed like that yeah, it's part of the master data understood so i mean if they are if the customer Correct. is doing business with multiple legal entities then that is a requirement yeah, question yeah they have to just make sure yes correct understood. those treatment has to be there if there are 100 legal entities 100 treatment has to be there and it all attached to a rule which is basically correspond to a product thank you thank you thank you roger thank you so now if i will come to the system uh, so first what we will go and do we will go and create a legal entity 
as i said as per the naming convention most of the time it's like in a country or a, a region uh, it depends right so let's say uh, we will say for an example this is my first legal entity and in billing uh, transactions or master data most of the places you will see this active checkbox uh, which basically give you a control why because see it's all our financial data tomorrow i um, mean uh, let's say a company is restructuring something right and they are saying okay this legal entity is no longer valid but there are already uh, invoices which are posted transactions payment happened on that so you can't simply go and delete that legal entity right system will not let you allow because those transactions are tightly tied uh, coupled with that legal entity but you want that going forward this legal entity there should no transaction happened on this legal entity then you come and deactivate the legal entity right then these are again the address information for most of the admin purposes billing is not really for now look taking care of or really doing anything with this but um, but we we do uh, populate this just for you know informative purposes like okay this legal entity belongs to which country uh, and uh, sometimes if we, if it is based on city state very rare but um, i mean uh, very rare companies are changing their legal entities based on state and city right so mostly as a country so it's on informative purposes you can leave the blank for now also that's not a problem so if you see legal entity is a very simple object that's it there is nothing else you have to do it in the legal entity thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today